recommend a good cup of tea. This could be a long one. Now before you start an archery, it's a good idea to have a little bit of knowledge. First, let's go over the different types of bows. You have a recurve bow, a long bow, a reflexed long bow. All of those can also be made into a takedown bow, where the limbs and riser come apart, and a compound bow. Now a little bit of bow terminology. The back of the bow, the belly of the bow, riser, handle, shelf, limb bolts, limb sockets, limbs, string knock, string, serving, knock point, kisser button, Compound bows are much more complicated, and this isn't a complicated one by any means, but let's go through it. Riser, handle, shelf, limb bolts, limb sockets, limbs, cams, draw length adjustment, cables, string, string dampeners, peep sight, D-loop, cable slide, and rest, in this case a whisker biscuit. Point, insert, shaft, cresting, collaring, fletchings, or plastic veins, and the knock. Most knocks also have a small bump or ridge here, which allows you to feel which side of the knock is up, which is handy when loading without looking at the bow. Buying your first bow. So this is a really daunting process and one that a lot of people struggle with and a lot of people end up doing incorrectly. And while I can't go over every type of bow that you could possibly buy, the benefits of each one and all that in just a short video, I can give you some basic guidelines of what you want to look for in a first bow, or any bow for that matter. The best advice I can give you is that no matter what bow you buy, compound, recurve, new, used, shoot it first. If you walk into your local archery shop and they don't have a place for you to shoot bows, you know it's not a good one, walk out and find a different one. If the archery shop is any good, they'll know how daunting buying a first bow can be, and they should be happy to let you shoot as many bows as you want before you find the one that you like. This was the first bow that I bought. I shot for a couple hours with five or six bows before I settled on this one, and the shop was happy to let me shoot many more than that if I had wanted. Now if you're still growing, or if you have a kid who maybe wants to get a bow, you maybe don't want to buy an expensive one right off the bat. So I would recommend finding a shop that'll let you do what's called a limb swap. Now for a limb swap, you're going to get a bow, a takedown like this one. Takedowns are handy because you can take them apart and put them in a bag for travel. But the other advantage is that you can take the limbs out and replace them. Now the reason that's handy is because if you find the right shop, you can go in, buy a bow with maybe 20 pound or 15 pound limbs, whatever you're comfortable with to start with. And once you're strong enough to handle some heavier limbs, you go in, you trade your old ones in for new ones, and you have basically a completely different bow, but all you had to do was swap out the limbs. Now this probably will have some cost with it, you usually don't go in and just trade them up for free, but it will be a lot less than buying an entirely new bow. Now I do always recommend these center cut takedowns to basically any beginner, they're really good beginner bows, but if you do want to go with a self bow, which is what this is. A self bow just means it's made out of one piece of wood. I do also recommend these old fiberglass bows. You can find them made by Bear, you can find them made by Ben Pearson and several other companies. Uh, if you do find a bow like this, there's a couple things you actually can look for to see if it's still in good condition. Obviously you just want to look at it real quick and make sure there's no cracks. Cracks running this way are fine. You don't want any running across the grain of the fiberglass. So this way is fine, this way is not. Uh, you'll often find little holes drilled into it where sights or rests or whatever were put on. Uh, those are usually fine. They don't hurt the bow at all. Now another thing you can look for, you actually put your ear close to the limb and you tap. If you hear a clean ringing sound, then it's good to go. If you hear any buzzing, there's probably a micro fracture in the fiberglass. If you do go through those tests and checks and you don't find anything wrong with the bow, uh, I do highly recommend Bear or Ben Pearson bows. These fiberglass recurves are just amazing. You can pick them up on eBay or at archery shops. This one is about 100 bucks and this one was only about 60. You won't find anything better for that price. So real quick, compound bows. So it's just a matter of opinion and taste. I think instinctive archery is more fun. Some people in, 
like compound archery more. I do still like my compound, I do still shoot it. It's just, it's less fun for me. So again, I recommend a recurve. If you like a compound, be prepared to drop some big bucks on it. Just as important as finding the right bow is finding the right arrows to match it. You can have a very nice bow with very nice arrows, but if they're not matched, the arrow won't fly well. An arrow is matched to a bow by its spine value, and the spine value refers to how stiff the arrow is. The lower the spine value, the stiffer the arrow is. You don't need to know anything about spine values other than a very rough estimate of what your bow uses. Now, these arrows, this is a V4 Sport 600. This is perfectly fine to shoot out of my 70 pound longbow and my 10 pound recurve. It doesn't fly well out of either of those bows, but it's not going to break out of either of them. And that's what you really need to know. If you shoot an arrow that has a really low spine value out of a light pounded bow, it'll fishtail and fly all over the place. If you shoot a very heavy bow with a very high spined arrow, or a very flexible arrow, it can actually explode when you let go of this string. But all you have to do is walk into your local shop, say I need some arrows spined to this bow. They'll say, what pound is your bow? They'll say, whatever, 45 maybe. They'll give you a selection of different arrows, and you'll shoot each one, and they should be able to tell you exactly which arrow you should shoot. You can also figure this out yourself. This is a well-spined arrow. It should look like it's flying perfectly straight. Arrows actually bend back and forth in flight, but you can only actually see that in high speed. So to our eyes, it looks like they're flying straight, which is why the term straight as an arrow only makes sense in terms of an arrow that's not in flight. You're also gonna want a shooting glove to protect your fingers. Get one that fits you properly. Too small is better because you'll eventually break it in. Too large and you'll end up having to tap your fingers on your shoulder every shot to reset the glove. A good way to break your glove in is to soak it in water and then wear it while shooting as it's drying. Once it's dried, it should be a perfect fit. And those are the only things you really need. Everything else is just an extra. Now I could probably go on for much longer about terminology and such, but let's get to the part that people actually care about and probably skip to anyway. Now when you finally start shooting, you're going to want a target to catch all of your arrows and a backstop to catch all of your missed arrows. Trust me when I say when you first begin, you will miss a lot of shots. Now I didn't have a big backstop when I first started shooting, so there may or may not have been a couple calls to the police. I do recommend that beginners find a range or a club where they can get instruction to start with. Just because of my bad experiences starting off completely on my own, completely self-taught. I made some mistakes, I made some bad habits that I didn't get out of until I had someone instructing me years later. So it's always a good idea to start with someone who knows what they're doing so they can at least give you the basics. Watching a video like this is fine, but it's always better to have someone on site who can actually tell you if you're doing something wrong. And now you finally get to shoot your new arrows out of your new bow into your new target. How wonderful. So now that you have a bow and some arrows and you know the basics, let's try it out. String, pull it with three fingers. Three fingers, one on top, two below the arrow. That was pitiful, I'm not gonna lie. But it's only your first try, so now let's go over some proper technique. One tip that I like to give to beginners is when you first start, stand three or so yards from the target. This sounds strange to people who know what they're doing, but if you think back, you'll remember, as a beginner, it's almost impossible to know how high to hold the bow. You have no idea. And for the first hundred shots or so, you probably shot up and over and below and around the target. So stand two or three yards away, there's almost no way you can miss from this distance and it'll give you a better idea of how high you have to aim for when you start moving back. 
So when you're beginning, it's easiest to concentrate on a list that you have to go through. So your list starts with your stance, and your stance starts with your feet. No wide stance, no super narrow stance, and no sassy teenager pose. Your feet should be shoulder width apart with your weight evenly distributed between them, and you should be standing straight up and tall. The next part is loading an arrow. When you load an arrow, please don't do this one. This is the least efficient way to load an arrow. You load an arrow, place it on the bow, and trap it with one finger. From here, you can either use a reverse hand to click it onto the string, or you can push it forward with three fingers and lock it onto the string that way, like I did in my Range Apprentice speed shooting video. This way your hand is right by the knock, so you have much more control. You're also still facing forward if you're using this, and a lot of ranges will frown upon pointing a loaded bow along the line of other archers. Next is the setup and draw. So to set up, a lot of people like to do a big rising or descending draw. But the most efficient way to shoot is to place the bow at height to begin with. That way, as you begin to pull back the string, you can sight as you go, which means less time spent at full draw and a more steady shot. So you'll place the bow at the height of the target, and then you're gonna begin drawing it back. Now when I draw back the bow, I'm gonna concentrate on using my back and shoulder muscles to pull back the string. I'm also gonna take a deep inhale to expand my chest and force my shoulders apart. This way my arms do very little work. It's mostly my back, shoulder muscles, and the filling of the lungs that draws the bow. When you use just your arms, you both fatigue quickly and have a less steady shot because if I'm holding here, with just my arms, you'll notice I begin to shake almost immediately. If I come to a full draw, I can almost lock my arm in place. The next thing you have to find is your anchor point. Your anchor point can be anything, um, but a lot of archers choose their first finger to the corner of their mouth. You'll notice when I shoot, I always bring my first finger to touch the corner of my mouth. It can be anything, as long as it's consistent. The next step is the release, and it's the most vital, because it's the last point at which you have control over what the arrow does. After you release the string, there's no stopping it from flying towards the target. Just before the release is when any aiming is done. Now in Instinctive Archer, you don't aim, you sight. And I believe this is a much more fun way to shoot. You can choose whatever you like. Sighting your target really means nothing more than taking in the target, the bow, and the arrow in what's called a sighting picture. Bow, arrow, target, background, sighting picture and using that information to judge where the bow should be. And of course, because you're basically just aiming from nothing but muscle memory, uh, it takes hundreds of hours of practice to become proficient this way. But it is a lot more fun in the end. So you're gonna get to your anchor point, and you're gonna release the string. I don't even like to think of the release as letting go of the string, because that tends to make people let go of its string. And it's really just letting it slip away from your fingers. You'll notice I also do what's called a brush. That's after I've released the string, my hand brushes back against my face, coming to the same point every time. My first finger is coming from the corner of my mouth and brushing back to just below my ear. This is just another way that you can make sure that every shot is the same. Let's talk about grip on the bow for a second. A lot of beginners will tend to use their Kung Fu death grip on the bow because they're afraid that it's gonna fly out of their hand. Having this grip on the bow really throws off your accuracy, and any experienced archer will tell you that the best grip is a loose one. The analogy I like to use is a bottle of toothpaste. You wanna to grip the bow firmly so it doesn't fly out of your hand, but not so much that you're gonna to squeeze toothpaste everywhere. I'm gonna show you here how unnecessary that Kung Fu death grip is. I'm not going to hold on to the bow at all my hand completely flat. As you can see, it falls straight down. It doesn't fly out of my hand. There's not enough force for that. The final step is to follow through. Now following through is just to hold position after you fire the shot. If you don't follow through and you drop the bow too soon, you can affect the flight of the arrow. So that was a lot of talking and not a lot of shooting. But just to recap, when I've loaded my arrow, I've kept the bow pointed down range. I've set up my stance so that my feet are shoulder width apart, weight evenly distributed, spine straight, and knees 
just slightly bent, not locked. I then grabbed onto the string with three fingers, two below the arrow, one above, and I've placed it at the height of my target. When I begin to draw, I'm going to take an inhale and concentrate on using my back and shoulder muscles to draw the bow. I found my anchor point, which is the fi first finger at the corner of my mouth. When I released, I kept my release smooth and basically just let the string slip through my fingers. I then followed through until the arrow hit the target and let my finger rush back to under my ear. So now you know what you actually have to do. Let's try it again. Alright, so it seems like you're still having a problem with the arrow falling off the string. But there's a simple solution to that. The simple solution is to add a tiny bit of twist. Instead of having my finger straight on the string, just put a little bit of twist. That way my first finger is holding the arrow to the bow. Using this method, I can shoot with the bow completely inverted and the arrow will never fall off the string. Another problem that a lot of beginners will have is when they release the string, they get a slap on the arm. These slaps can be pretty painful, especially at first, but there is a way to solve this. You can either use gear or technique. For gear, I can go out and get an arm guard. A cheapo one like this will probably cost you maybe $5 on Amazon. Now, I don't particularly like arm guards because they just end up being another unnecessary piece of gear that I have to carry. So I like to use a technique so that it doesn't slap my arm. Now there's two reasons it can be slapping your arm, and there's a way to fix each of them. First reason is that your arm is too straight. A completely straight arm means that the string is going to slap the back of your elbow or your wrist every single time. So the super simple solution is to point your elbow that direction and bend your arm slightly. So instead of having my elbow pointed straight at the ground, I point it that way and then bend my arm slightly. That keeps my elbow and wrist out of the path of the string. So you see here, my arm is in a rigid, unnatural position. And here, my arm is a little bit more relaxed with the elbow slightly bent. Now there's also another reason the string can be hitting your arm. And you can tell if the string is hitting up by your wrist, it's a problem with your bow. And the problem is most likely that your brace height is too low. This is the brace height. The distance between the handle and the string. If the brace height is too low and the string comes to a rest here, there's really no way that you can bend your arm out of the way. And if the brace height is too low, that means that the string is just a little bit too long. All you have to do is get a little bit shorter string or twist the string slightly. And in that way, you can get it to stop slapping in the inside of your wrist. So those are the basics of shooting. I could go on for hours about more details and training techniques but this should get you started if you're just getting into archery. If you've got the basics down and you want to see some speed shooting or techniques to increase your accuracy, I have some other videos on my channel and I'll link them in the description below. So thanks for watching that video guys. I hope this is enough to spark your interest in archery. But that's all I have for you today guys. Archer out.